The honored worker of the Republic of Kazakhstan, ethnologist Hanim Aydash, studied Kazakh national clothing in detail and wrote a book about its impact on modern culture. Creating her designer collections, she manages to harmoniously combine their regional folk traditions with modern style. In one of the interviews, you said that people should never change the Kazakh national clothes. What exactly did you mean? I'm in the dress of the bride. Now Kazakh women are getting married in different clothes. The white dress and white vest are inspired by the fashion of the Soviet era. In the 19th century, Kazakh women's wedding robes were red. Both the dress, vest and sokile were in red tones. For example, in the verses of Serbaya Maulyanov, there are such lines. She will no longer wear a red dress. And now only a few girls are getting married in red robes. I am a specialist in ethnology and archaeology. All the archives of the 15th, 16th, 17th centuries tell us that the red color was traditional for women's wedding attire. And nowadays, such rituals as Petashar when daughter-in-law greets her husband's relatives, or Tusal Kisir when baby is making his first steps, these sacred rituals turned into some kind of show. This has never happened before. If we talk about the Betashar, it has always been a very honorable mission to hold the daughter-in-law by the arm during the ceremony. For example, in my youth, this mission was trusted only to those women who themselves had children, who were diligent housewives in their father-in-law's house. The current generation is so lazy that people don't even bother finding their relatives and friends. The daughter-in-law doesn't invite her husband's relatives, the younger brother doesn't visit his older brother, his relatives, and the artists are invited to host the celebrations. You cannot do it this way. Customs and traditions are the future of the family hearth. It's the spirit of the people. For example, seeing of the bride and meeting the daughter-in-law. Although I dressed 200 singers in my life, I never asked any artist to cut the fetters of a child or to bring my daughter-in-law to a bed shark, because for me, Family is my environment and it's very valuable. Kazakh's traditions and customs live in the heart of the people. The bride's future, the future of a husband's family itself, will depend on how the bride enters the new house. She will have to make her new family happy, give birth to children. This is a very big deal. When relatives and friends say goodbye to their girl, then they express their respect. A bride will be met by the bridegroom's relatives. Kilian, in Kazakh daughter-in-law, is a new person who has come. Kilian will be a daughter-in-law for 20 years and in 50 years, she will already be the mother of this dynasty. Therefore, the daughter-in-law must be met properly.
And now people have instructed everything to the artists. Are these our customs and traditions? This is not ours. This is some kind of show. How do we keep our traditions and customs in the memory of children? Only the show will remain in their minds. Traditions and customs are such things that are worth considering, which must be valued. They are very valuable things. Сондықтан салт дәстүр деген өте ойланатын дүние, қадірлейтін дүние, өте қымбат дүние. Ағаш көркі жапырақ дейміз, адам көркі. They say leaves adorn trees, people adorn clothes. In folk songs there are many references to Kaza clothing. They sing a white dress, a red bash bent, a beautiful girl. In general, did the Kazakh people like to dress up and what were their ideas about fashion? People love to dress up and fashion was a great deal. You know, Russian experts conducted a study in our steppe villages from 1951 to 1955, and later they wrote a book about it. And already in 1971, Uzbek Ali Zhenibekov conducted the research. So all these works bring scientific justification to the fact that our people had their own special style and their own fashion. Our Kazakh national clothing is so beautiful. We need to talk about its unique style. There is an English style in Europe, for example, now you, by the way, are dressed in the English style, and in the same way one can easily recognize the style of the Kazakh people. Among the clothes of the peoples of Asia, Kazakh clothing stands out just for its special style, because it has classic canons. It is distinguished by its neatness, simplicity and of course its monumental patterns among the clothes of Central Asia's countries. Therefore, it's impossible to confuse the Kazakh national clothes with some other. I think this is because our people for centuries have not imitated anyone in clothing or patterns. For example, the large size of the patterns that were applied to yurts and the large size of the patterns that were applied to animals were similar to each other, but these patterns were not used on clothes. What else distinguishes our national clothes besides ornaments and patterns? There are many differences. For example, our national clothing has always been created taking into account the environmental conditions of the Kazakh people. The Shikpen was born only in the summer because it was soon from light fabric and protected from heat. But Kupe was intended only for autumn. However, not only the time of year, but also the climatic features of a particular area determined the features of the clothes. The cut and uniform did not change, but each region had its own requirements, not only for style, but also for what patterns should be decorated on clothes. And even the method of cut was determined by the climatic conditions and lifestyle. We have prepared a video about you. Let's watch it.
The life of Hanim Aydash is connected with the scene. She devoted a significant part of her career to the design of theatrical productions, and in the last 10 years, the artist has been developing the talents of young designers. The success of her work was shown not only at local fashion festivals, but also at international competitions. I think that artists performing on stage educate people not only with their songs, but with their appearance, the way they are dressed, because fans always try to imitate them. Hanim Aydash creates her own concepts. She is a fashion designer who knows history, traditions, customs, and the whole country. She is a person who fills the Kazakh culture. I learn a lot from her. The Kazakh spirit can be always felt in the words of the artist. In times when national self-awareness is growing and the demands of society are rising, the quality should be on top. Hanim Aydash and her followers understand this quite well. She is a designer who makes her invaluable contribution to Kazakhstan's fashion industry. If we forget our national clothes, referring to the fact that time has changed and fashion is changing, if we begin to forget about our original values, then nothing will remain of our national appearance of spiritual wealth. Therefore, Hanim Aydash is recreating the spiritual wealth of our national clothes and adjusting them to the fashion trends of our time. She does this so that her clothes can be worn not only on the stage but also in everyday life, and they are beautiful, and I think this direction raised her work to a new level. In the last program, the artist of ornaments, Shoptibai by Dildin, told me that before, Kazakh supplied thin lines of ornament to Shabans instead of large patterns. Are there any rules? What should future generations of craftsmen know? My generation had the honor of seeing a lot of what you will not see now. When I was still very young, I saw how patterns were created in the process of felting when they made cover for Corpia. They depicted large patterns that should have been visible from afar and on the edges they made a fringe of goat hair, which was dyed. Buttons were soon on, and a kind of cover was made for Corpé. People made covers for teacups, sewed beautiful blankets for camels, horses, and all of these products had large patterns. But these are patterns for everyday life that have never been painted on clothes. Do you understand? Your clothes and cover for cattle is not the same thing, so I do not like clothes with large patterns. A certain meaning is also laid in clothes. Just as a person has an image formed by his consciousness, intellect, similarly clothes have it as well. But unfortunately, not always. There are clothes with meaning, and sometimes meaningless clothes. There are clothes that reflect emotions. This most often occurs during the period of creative growth of the designer. Uh, 
As the singer trains his voice and expands his repertoire, so the designer releases his collections. Conscious clothes and clothes with meaning are created not only when they are properly thought over, but also when they hear the history of their people. There are everyday things that are always remembered by people, for example vests, chapans, light dresses, bedspreads, that do not change and remain unchanged and are repeated. Kazakhs especially revere shawls. What sacred meaning does this garment have? While a girl is growing, she can wear different hats and skull caps and hats with fur or something else, depending on the weather and climate. Kazakhs put on a headscarf on their daughter-in-law, who just came to the house of her new family. Girls embroidered shawl and presented it to their lovers. Why does a girl give her shawl to a young man? This is an equivalent to the fact that she gives him her heart and her feelings, and this shawl comes back to her when she becomes a daughter-in-law and puts it on her head. And already in old age, the shawl will be like kimishek, headdress for her. It's also necessary to say that hair conveys very important information. Previously, a woman let her hair down if her husband was dead. This indicated a bad news, that her husband had died. In general, women wore two braids, which were decorated with silver jewelry. This also suggests that our people love to dress up and look beautiful. I really love shawls and have released a lot of them. Not only Kazakhs honor the shawl, shawls are common to all Eastern people. <laughs> Kazakhs have many beliefs related to clothing. What do you particularly value? I take traditions very seriously when handing out the clothes of the deceased. When my father passed away, I took his hat, which he wore for many years. It's a very valuable thing for me because it retained his smell. I do not like when hats are thrown to the floor, no matter how cheap they are, and even if they are not needed at all, headwear should never be allowed to touch the floor or shoes. Clothing gives meaning to life because it's a state of mind of a person, his mood. There is clothing that people wear for solemn bright events. There are also happy clothes. For example, in the, my 14 years when I needed to leave the village to study, but we did not have money to collect me on the road, my father gave me his wolf coat and said, I have nothing more expensive than this coat. I got it from my grandfather. Sell it and make money for yourself. That I will never forget. Probably no one would have bought it from me if I had gone out to sell it, but for my father it was the most expensive thing. For Kazakhs, clothing had a special meaning because it is connected with the perception of our environment. And in the modern world, for many, clothes depend on a mood. And for some, clothes are memory, 
fate, honor, or gift. Many relics were found during archaeological excavations. From these findings, one can understand how our ancestors dressed, what this style and ancient clothes look like. Do you somehow use all this data in your work? Yes, of course. For example, when a female headdress was found in the city of Bozok, I recreated its original image and later used it in my work. Or now the Asian man's military helmet has such a detail, Chibege, which should cover the hair from dust from the back while riding. I also use this element when creating stage images for historical productions. In general, folk epos and legends describe how Kazakhs used to dress, but not only oral folk art, but also, for example, the book Poets of Five Centuries tells what clothes Kazakh people wore. In one of the programs, poet Serik Bayaspanov told me that he had found his poetic style closer to 60 years. You are also a person of art. Can you confidently say that you have found your style? To be honest, it seems to me that only in recent years I have found myself, but I still doubt it. The thing is that every year you change, your vision changes, but you cannot find yourself. Now when I look at my style, I think, this is my inner world, this is my figurative thinking. You look at all this and understand that you are beginning to learn this world. Finding your style is very difficult. For example, in my youth, my clothing style was completely different. I have changed my style five to six times. I used only three colors in my clothing because if you add a fourth, you get a circus. But now I think the more flowers, the better and more beautiful. But a certain limit also exists. As you probably noticed, today I am dressed according to your old views. In fact, today we have successfully chosen clothes. We are in the same trend. So both your and my current mood coincided. Clothing can tell a lot about this. Thank you for this interview. We wish you good luck in your future work. You are always welcome.